So, the, what are the advantages of a lesser beam welding? So, light is inertialless, is not it? So, you can stop it anytime at a fraction of a second. So, obviously, you know, uh, uh, there was an uh, invention last week reported in Nature Material. I do not know how many of you follow the newspapers, right? So, so a university in UK, they invented a new camera which can record the pulses of laser. The pulses a uh, pulse of a continuous laser will be in, in, a, in a smaller than femtosecond, 10 power minus 12 seconds. And they invented a mechanism to record f videos in several billion frames per second. They can freeze the yeah. So, they could see the pulsing of a continuous wave laser. Okay. So, they could see how the laser actually coming out from the medium, even a continuous wave. Okay. And because of this property, the laser can be manipulated so nicely, they can generate the pulses of extremely tiny seconds. So, we can generate pulses of each pulse lasting a femtosecond. Okay. So, laser can be turned off and on with a duration of femtosecond. Okay. So, these are all widely used for lithography applications. What lithography applications means to generate electronic materials to change the surface properties of the material, right? So the materials like hydrophobic material. Okay, what is hydrophobic material? Yeah, like a lotus leaf. Okay, so lotus leaf uh, uh, surface contains a uh, tiny dimples of a few nanometers wide, and that makes the lotus leaf hydrophobic. And uh, people use laser of femtosecond pulses. So, the, these laser pulses you know, can be uh, you know, can be sent into the surface of the material for example, titanium to create the nano pillars. And so, that the surface of the material can be hydrophobic <coughs> and we use femtosecond lasers or pentasecond lasers. And we can manipulate lasers in various ways because laser does not have inertia. So, you can switch it off and on precisely. Okay at a very rapid stop and stop. So, that is one of the important parameters properties of the of the, the laser. Okay. So, we can also manipulate right. The arc is difficult. Okay. We always have a start and stop problem when you have arc and plasma. Okay. You press the button it still you see something is going on right. Because obviously, we have transformers, capacitors, rectifiers and they have the response time whereas, laser can be manipulated precisely. Okay. And we can also focus the laser in a very tiny spot, is not it? The laser I showed you over here in the videos, they have a spot size of 50 microns, 50 microns, 50 microns, 4 kilowatt power can be focused on a 50 microns spot size. So, enormous amount of power density okay? so, and with that we can concentrate the, the laser power into very tiny area. So, we can increase the depth of penetration without affecting the microstructure of the material widely. Whereas, in arc you have an arc size, the envelope size of a few millimeters always. Okay. If you need GTW, typical the arc envelope size will be close to 5 to 10 mm. So, the energy distribution is much wider. So, the, the, uh, in the laser we can focus it using optics. Okay. So, we can use it is a light, is not it? So, it can, light can be focused by various uh, optical uh, based on the wavelength, you may also choose the optical uh, lenses okay? and then we can focus the light power into very tiny area. Okay? And then the other important application of laser compared to electron beam is laser welding can be done at room temperature and room atmosphere, sorry not room temperature, room atmosphere. The electron beam obviously you need some vacuum, uh, we will see in the electron beam welding in subsequent slides. And some material is very difficult to weld by conventional fusion welding techniques like an arc welding and plasma welding. For example, titanium, the titanium oxidizes okay, significantly. So, uh, in a way the plasma is the best to weld titanium because we have an dual gas, is not it? So, production is very high from the atmosphere. So, plasma welding is the best to weld titanium and laser can also be used because the exposure of the material is very tiny. So, you do not expose much larger volume. And we can also use a proper shielding which can control the oxidation of uh, titanium. And uh, the materials, for example, quartz, as long as the material absorbs laser, that is okay. 
So, we can use the uh, you can weld those materials using laser. So, some of the materials you know cannot be used arc, no, no, it is very difficult to fuse, whereas laser can be used. And based on the beam size, spot size, uh, and the fit up, and we can also make very narrow weld and very precise weld, okay. Because laser again manipulated can be manipulated you know, using an optics, you know, we, uh, even if very difficult to reach, and the laser source can be focused onto uh, an, a geometry which is not reachable otherwise by the arc or resistance spot welding, definitely, okay. And the weld has very little contamination because you can also have an, a shielding. Right, and because of the very confined heating, what you do, the he HSR heat affected zone is also very narrow, and you will have a very steep temperature gradient. Okay, because the the, the keyhole can be uh, hardly a one hour to a mm if you're using uh, a beam size of 550 micron. Okay, so you will end up forming in a keyhole of one mm, the well pool of two or three mm size. So very fine seam can be made using laser of spot size of 50 microns or so. And uh, because of the confined heating, the heat is also extracted rapidly because you have a much more mass. So, the temperature gradient will be very steep, right. And due to that, the heat effect zone is, is also very small, very narrow, right. It is clear, okay, good. So, now some of the laser parameters just took it from a handbook for your reference for future. I mean, you can use it. Um, for example, in, in the pulse laser and continuous wave laser. So, what is different between these two pulse lasers? You obviously, you have a pulsing continuous wave, generally ND arc produces continuous wave, laser is continuous, but continuous laser is a relative term, okay. Inside the continuous wave also you will have pulses, but they are overlapping, yeah? like a femtosecond uh, pulses, it becomes continuous, subjective, okay. So, uh, in fact, uh, one, uh, one of my uh, former students argued with me. Uh, point defects, zero dimension, one dimension, two dimension. Okay, the vacancy is a. Okay, so it's an. Uh, what do you call it? It's a zero dimensional defect. No, sir. He said no, no. You can measure the size of the vacancy. Okay, it is a three-dimensional. So what do you call it? It's an, an, uh, a zero dimensional defect. Similarly, the continuous wave is relative. Okay, in still the continuous wave, you also have a very tiny pulses which are overlap. That's why it's a continuous wave, isn't it? So, the pulse laser is the ruby and CO2 and ND arc pulses. So, if you look at uh, say for example, uh, uh, 0.5 mm and you can use so 1 to 5 kilowatts. So, generally ideally say favorite 1.2 mm thick steel if you want to weld, right, in overlap configuration, right. So, the laser is generally done in overlap configuration. So, to put together it will be 2.4 mm is not it, 2 times t. And if you want to have a uh, full well seam formed like this, 2 kilowatts should be sufficient. Yeah, 2 to 2.5 kilowatts, you will have a uh, full penetration weld of uh, 1.2 mm thick sheets overlapped to each other. So, 2 to 2.5 kilowatts, you will have a, a very nice weld made in steel. Aluminium you need to use a slightly higher power, reason is the absorption only 10 percent for aluminium, for steel will be about 20 25 percent absorption, whereas in aluminium, aluminium does not absorb light. That is the reason when you heat up aluminium, it always remains white because everything is reflected, okay. Whereas if you heat up the, the, the iron, so you see the exchange in color, right. So that means that all other colors are absorbed, only the orange color is sent out. So, there is some absorption, whereas aluminum in heat up it is very dull, it is always white because nothing is goes in, all the light is reflected, okay. The same when you use laser welding of aluminum alloys, the absorption is very minimal, okay, only 10 percent. So, efficiency of laser welding of aluminum alloys is extremely poor because of the poor absorption of laser. Okay, so some of the, uh, the parameters I listed from the handbook, you can have a look at it, okay. So, typical parameters, laser welding parameters, you know, when you have lasers, the two controlling factors only. So, not like laser efficiency, efficiency is also there, but here the important parameter is laser power, welding speed, that is it, okay. So, the laser power and the welding speed, that is what is going to determine the, uh, the penetration. 
say for example this graph I took it from John Norrish. So say if you are welding an a 4 mm thick plate in all up configuration. So the, the travel speed obviously if you are using it say uh, 1, 2, 3 kilowatt laser dots. So you can use an uh, you need to use a very small uh, very slow laser speed and obviously you know, if you are using higher power okay for a larger thicknesses. So you can have an, a process window established as a function of laser power and the travel speed okay. So, so it is very simple you do not worry about it like in a, in a uh, in, in gas tanks not welding or gas not welding. So you will have current and voltage and you will have to think about shielding gas because those, those are all factors which is going to affect the penetration. In this case very simple laser welding uh, power and the travel speed that is it which would control the, the welding parameters good. So again, so some of the uh, parameters generally we use. If you look at uh, uh, the, the commonly used low carbon steels, pipeline steels, uh, nickel base inconel seven and eight, okay, and the aluminium alloys. So aluminium alloys, when you are using it, you always have to have a very high uh, power uh, because of the power absorption. The same goes with titanium as well. Titanium also needs a slightly higher uh, power. So the most commonly used joint designs are the overlap and the butt configuration okay. And in laser welding and electron beam welding when you are doing butt configuration the edge preparation is very critical okay. So because of a very narrow heat source is not it. So when you are making a bulk butt weld so the fit up should be perfect. So suppose if the edge preparation is not good okay you are preparing the edge something like this which most of the times uh, BTEC students end up doing it okay. I even sometimes in even master students as well. So if you prepare edge something like this uh, and you have an, a laser which is pointing of 50 micron points lasers is pointing out the maximum the exposure area is hardly a millimeter okay. So if edge preparation is not good in butt welding configuration you are not going to melt properly you are not going to form keyhole stable. Right. So the preparation of the edge is extremely critical uh, for laser and the electron beam welding because the heat source itself is very narrow. Right. In arc welding, okay. So it was uh, the envelope itself is about 5 mm, isn't it? So the lasers, the arc, will have much wider uh, heat source. So even if you have a uh, small, uh, the the, the uh, problem in the edge preparation, you can still overcome that. But whereas in laser welding and electron beam welding, the edge preparation is very critical. So sometimes you know, because of that you know uh, overlap configuration the lap welding is addressable. So in this case then we can, we can go away with that problem. That is why in automotive industries I mean the laser welding is done and it is mostly done with overlap configuration. So otherwise if you are using a very long thick sheet right so the edge preparation is very tricky right. So you, you can have a shearing and then shearing edge can have a surface variation. So if you are doing overlap configuration it is very nice isn't it. So the laser spot welds they are also widely used and for some applications uh, instead of using seam weld you can reduce uh, laser spot weld uh, the, the weld area by you just using a spot welds. And then uh, the various configurations which are also commonly used like uh, uh, the plug joint okay so it is also used and then uh, the cordon weld as well these are the common joint designs uh, used for laser. And then there are some attempts to combine laser and arc okay because laser and arc is always nice. So why the in arc welding the penetration is very poor because the heat density the, the power density is very low right. In laser welding the power density is very high but you have very narrow weld. So that is what I, I, I have shown in this slide. So suppose if you use a only laser, so you will have a keyhole, this is a keyhole formation but it is not a full th true thickness keyhole but you have a keyhole formed but the weld is very narrow okay. And if you are using an just an GMAW, the weld bead will be wide but the penetration will be very poor because of the power, power density of the arc okay. By now combining these two, so we can have 
a larger penetration and then slightly wider bead. The wider bead is always nice because then the, the stress partitioning will be much nicer, right? If you have a narrow bead, the weld is very narrow. That means that when you are applying, uh, uh, using the weld in engineering application, the stress is concentrating on very, very narrow region, okay? So that means that the, the weld, the narrow weld is prone for failure. Then if you have a much larger weld, the stress is distributed over a large area, okay? So laser property is uh, high penetration, productivity is higher because of the high power and distortion, distortion is minimal because of the narrow heat affected zone and the heat source and you will have very good tolerant, to, tolerance. But whereas uh, the laser is expensive and the cooling rates are much higher, so the microstructure what is generated from the laser wells invariably if you are using steel it is smart synthetic, okay. Whereas in MIG, so you have a cheap a conventional good fit up and uh, the distortion is higher and then uh, process is very slow. Right, so now by combining laser and uh, arc, so we can get the benefit of both laser and uh, JMAW, okay. So in this case I showed you our example what we when we combined the laser and the heat source make and we can increase the penetration and we can also have a much wider bead so that we get both benefits from the laser and the arc, okay. And uh, we can achieve a much larger productivity. Say for example, uh, th this is a uh, pipeline weld, so welding of uh, pipeline steel. Okay, so pipelines uh, welding is done in a ship, right? I showed you, I think I already explained a J weld configuration in a previous class, I suppose, long back. So these uh, uh, wells are used for underwater, okay? So this is an, uh, uh, I think, uh, your 60 pipe of uh, 16 mm thick, okay? And conventionally, when you are doing it welding, we, we, we have a, a root pass made. And then subsequently six passes using GMAW, okay. So you see I think of passes, okay. And then uh, so root pass plus six passes are needed to have a weld by GMAW, okay. By combining laser and GMAW and we can achieve the full penetration weld in a single pass because we have now a heat source which is in high power density and a JMAW which can supply enough material, enough liquid material to fill the weld cavity. So instead of having seven passes, we can fill the weld cavity in one pass. 